and wine pairings 101. Before I even get into any nitty gritty of food and wine pairings, I wanna tell a story, because I feel like the story is important for the spirit of a food and wine pairing. So my friend was an au pair in France, which is essentially a fancy French nanny. And as part of this nanny duty, um, you get cooked a lot of food. It's kind of a sweet gig. And so this woman would cook these wonderful meals for her. She's living in Paris and they were laden with butter, just like delicious French things that they would make all the time. And this woman who would cook would always have a pairing with it, like a wine pairing with it. So my friend who was there was just shocked and amazed by how this woman always just like had the perfect bottle of wine and something like great to go with everything she cooked. And one day she asked her, she goes, how do you know what to pair with what? And this woman, this very bougie, Parisian madame said, wine pairings are bullshit. We of course taken aback, like you have to think, well, if this Parisian woman is drinking red Bordeaux with every meal just cause she loves it, then that should say something, right? Like she would drink red Bordeaux with fish, with chicken, with vegetables, with dessert. Like this woman just loves red Bordeaux. And for her, the perfect wine pairing is the thing that she loves drinking, which is red Bordeaux. So I tell that story to start because in essence, <laughs> you should really just drink what you like. That's the most important wine pairing, figuring out what you like and just sticking with it, right? I want that to be sort of the core tenant as we move forward because yeah, there are kind of nitty gritty things that you can do and like things that sommeliers and restaurants think about when they pair food. But I think asking yourself, what would Madame do <laughs> is really the best way to approach this. So just drink what you like. But if you're watching this cause you maybe work in a restaurant and wanna get better at that, or it's just a skill that you wanna work on personally and just elevate your home cooking game or hosting game, then this is for you. So let's get into it. The goal of a good wine pairing is that the pairing will either highlight the food or highlight the wine. That's a good pairing, but a great pairing elevates both the food and the wine. These are very hard to do. To make the best pairings, you're gonna wanna consider the flavor of the wine, but also the kind of style of wine. Is the wine sparkling, white, red, rosé, things like that. And again, remember, like a bad pairing is probably not that bad. Like you're not gonna mess it up. <laughs> Even if you mess it up, you still have a tasty wine at the end of the day. It's pretty low risk, so let's get into it. Pairings kind of fall into two categories, which we call complementary or contrasting pairings. With complementary pairings, you're really highlighting a certain aspect of the dish. So for example, let's say you're making a grilled duck breast with cherry compote. This is kind of like a classic cherries and duck go well together thing. And so the complementary pairing would be thinking, well, there's a cherry compote with the duck. Maybe I should think about cherries or cherry flavored wine or things that have like these kind of berry notes to the wine. You could even go more specific and say you're making euros, right? And the euros come Come with a tzatziki sauce and you go, man, I love tzatziki sauce. Like I feel like the wine should really highlight something in the tzatziki. So maybe you want to highlight those dill notes in the tzatziki to really bring out that strong tzatziki flavor. There's a saying within food and wine pairings that people use all the time for complementary pairings, which is if it grows together, it goes together. For example, in Sancerre, France, which is a region in France that makes certain kinds of Sauvignon Blanc wine, they also make goat cheese. So the grows together, goes together, complementary pairing thought process would be that if you're having either like a goat cheese salad with beets or whatever you're having and that has goat cheese in it, pair it with a Sancerre, because if it grows together, it goes together, it really highlights the acidity of this cheese. So with complementary pairings, you really wanna think about the thing you want to highlight in that dish. Whether it is the obvious main portion of the dish, like a steak, like if you wanna highlight a steak, go for a nice fabulous red wine. Or again, if you're trying to highlight the sauce, find something that matches that. Complementary pairing, Nebbiolo from Northern Italy and mushroom risotto. This is a, if it grows together, it goes together type thing. In Northern Italy, they really cherish these rice dishes and foraged mushrooms, as opposed to Southern Italy, which is more pasta, pizza, things like that. Nebbiolo is also grown in Northern Italy, so it's a really lovely pairing together. Complementary pairing of a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and pesto, whether it's in a pasta dish or on a pizza would be great especially the New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, they have a lot of these sort of green bell pepper tasting notes that go really well with the greenness of the pesto. 
Contrasting pairings is what it sounds like. You're creating a contrast in flavors. Now, this one's a little trickier, but if you nail it, it's very impressive. With contrasting pairings, think about the wine as a palate cleanser for the food. The easiest contrasting pairing to understand is something like foie gras and sauterne. So foie gras, which is a super fatty goose liver, is gonna go well with a sweet wine like a sauterne. You think of a sweet and salty combo, you think of pretzels and chocolate, right? There's this thing that's wired in our brains where we really like this sweet and salty combo. That's why a lot of these like cheese and port combinations go well together too. Thinking of a sweet beverage to go with a very savory or very fatty food. Again, a little trickier, but like you are going to impress everyone if you nail it. I think providing examples of classic pairings really also helps to drive this home. So you can start thinking about what you're maybe cooking for dinner even tonight and what would go with it and why. So let's walk through a couple examples. Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a big bodied red wine to go with a nice piece of steak. The tannin in the Sauvignon Blanc and the fat in the steak are they're best friends, they love each other. There are scientific reasons for why this is, but there's also just no denying it, it's very good. Sweet Riesling and spicy foods. This is a very good contrasting pairing. So the sweetness of the Riesling really cancels out and tones down some of this heat that's coming from the spicy food. Sweet wines do neutralize spice, so that's also a good tactic if you wanna serve something really spicy to a group of people who might be a little averse to spicy foods. Another great contrasting pairing is fried chicken and champagne. Champagne is this light, refreshing, sparkling wine. Fried chicken is fatty, delicious, crunchy, intense. Much like sweet wines, bubbles act as a very nice palate cleanser as well. And if you've learned something so far, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Another classic complimentary pairing is this lobster and oat chardonnay. Lobster is quite rich and almost buttery in itself. Oak Chardonnay has that structure, that body, and that richness that really complements the lobster nicely. When it comes to pairing, imagine wines with oak on them as a stick of butter in the dish. You think of lobster and butter going really well together. And then for white wines that aren't oaked, think of it as a squeeze of lemon. Think about Pinot Grigio going with fish can be really helpful. And then we can do a rosé with a, some sort of chicken salad or tuna salad sandwich. I love tuna salad sandwiches. And the pairing with the rosé is really nice because you think of this mayo-y kind of rich tuna salad on this sandwich to go with a contrasting palate cleansing rosé. I tried to make this video a good balance of having practical things that you could try to do at home, like the complimentary contrasting pairings and all the examples of wine pairings. But please do not forget that it's just wine it's okay, even if it's a bad pairing, it's gonna be okay. And ask yourself, what would Madame do?